Hey guys, this is Kirob speaking and today we continue our investigation of the rune hunting aspect within the classic Diablo 2 Lord of Destruction. This knowledge miniseries is focused on the most reliable and available source of runes in the game, the Countess. In the first episode I showed and analyzed the drop rates from 300 Hell difficulty Countess runs in the form of a rune drop diary, lots of graphs and lots of numbers. If you haven't watched the first episode yet, specifically the rune drop diary part, I would recommend you do so first as spoilers lie ahead. In this episode we are going to expand our knowledge of the Countess and her treasured special rune drops to encompass all three difficulty levels to get the full picture and to better understand the odds of finding specific runes. To fuel this continued investigation I completed 300 Countess runs in Nightmare difficulty and an additional 300 runs in Normal difficulty. This makes comparisons easy as we are dealing with equal amounts of data on each difficulty level when combined with the original 300 runs completed in Hell difficulty which were analyzed in the first episode. Like in the first episode, this is all played out in single player mode as that makes sure to not get suspended for looking and behaving like a bot. There is no difference in rune drop rates between single player and multiplayer games run on players 1. While there would be a negligible increase in drop rates for higher player numbers, effectively reducing the so called no drop rate of the counters non specific drops. This difference results in a sub 1% change in rune discovery so we would not even be able to tell the difference from just 300 runs anyway. What was rather amusing were people sincerely calling me out for using map hack in the first episode and in case you wonder what kind of map hack I'm using it is called single player. It is a pretty awesome thing and you should definitely try it out sometime too. Apart from one little highlight drop uh, during my Nightmare difficulty runs, uh, which I am showing right here, right now, um, there was not much exciting stuff to see on these lower difficulty runs, they were really tedious. Which means that we, instead of uh, making a diary form as we did for the Hell runs, we get right into the results with all the data extracted and ready to be absorbed. First we need to establish how many runes were found in the 300 runs in each difficulty and you will be surprised how even these results turned out to be. In normal difficulty I found 558 runes, in nightmare 555 and in hell as you already know from the first episode I found 556. These results are closer than the variants would allow for so it may be a little bit of a coincidence that they are that close. The number of drops per run breaks down as follows. About 30% of drops were disappointing 1 drops, about 50% were standard 2 drops and about 20% were nice 3 drops. The outlying cases of no runes dropped were around 2% and the amazing 4 runes dropped in a single run turned out to be on the sub 1% level. Looking at the corresponding data for Nightmare and Hell difficulty shows that this game mechanic is not affected by difficulty level. One thing to point out is that these distributions show in a convoluted manner the odds of both counters specific rune drops as well as normal unique boss rune drops. The counters specific rune drops account for up to 3 runes where we can see that the chance of getting 3 runes is roughly 15 to 20 percent. More than 3 runes only drop if there were one or more counters non specific rune drops at the same time. The chances of that happening can be estimated with the data at hand and it turned out to be about 4% chance to drop one counters non specific rune per run. This is important and confusing in Nightmare and Hell difficulty as the three counters specific runes are level limited to Io in Nightmare and Ist in Hell 
while the rare, non-specific rune drop is limited only by the area, the act and difficulty level, meaning that she can drop up to a co-rune in Nightmare difficulty and up to a low rune in Hell difficulty. This doesn't influence the overall statistics in any significant way though, as these are extremely rare exceptions. Yes, you can find a Vex rune from the Countess in Hell, but it has nothing to do with her Countess specific rune drop. Just in case you are wondering, yes in principle she can also give you a 5 rune or even a 6 rune drop. But that is very rare and my estimates show me that it would happen about once every 3000 runs for a 5 drop and once every 80,000 runs for a 6 drop. Now that we know how many runes to expect, it is time to look at what specific runes we are likely to find. Please note that for the following graphs I am using the same y axis scale in order to make direct comparisons easier. Alright, let's start out with normal difficulty. In normal difficulty the Countess can only drop up to a RAL rune. But the distribution of runes found was anything but homogenous. The Eld rune is the rarest with only 24 found in all those runs, followed by L and Nef while all the other runes have a very high chance to drop and you can expect to find all of them within a few runs. If you remember from the first episode we did see kind of a microstructure in the low end spectrum of the runes we found in Hell difficulty and this is confirmed by these findings in Normal difficulty where every second rune type has a significantly lower drop rate than the next higher rune. Looking at the rune distribution of the Nightmare runs, this microstructure is less pronounced and we see how the runes spread out much more like a Gaussian centered around the Ral rune. Compared to the rune distribution in Hell difficulty, the highest runes that can be found, Dol, Hell and Io, still have a decent drop rate. The distribution of runes from the 300 hell runs we've already discussed and we're familiar with since the first episode and I refer you to that for a, a bit more of a discussion of its characteristics. For a better comparison of all three distributions um, I give you here a quick loop of these three distributions so that you with the same scale can just plain up straight up compare them. To better visualize how common or rare some of these runes are, a stacked representation of rune finds is pretty useful. Here are the finds from the three difficulty levels right next to each other for comparison. What I find striking is how similar the finds from Nightmare and Hell difficulty are, where the long tail of the Hell distribution barely makes a dent in the overall distribution of runes. With all these free datasets available, we now take a closer look at the details and the cubing of runes, like we did for the Hell runs. For completeness sake, I am listing everything up to a low rune. This is everything between rune number 1 to 28 and rune level 11 to 59. Filling in the data from all 900 runs, it is easy to calculate the chances to find a specific rune per run on a chosen difficulty level. The highest chance to find any rune is the Tar rune on normal difficulty, with a 45% chance, while it still has a very high chance of 25% on Hell difficulty. If you are looking for an Io rune for instance, go no further than Nightmare difficulty. Not only is it faster to run there, but also it has a somewhat higher drop rate than in Hell difficulty. In order to check what rune reach every difficulty level has, we need to consider cubing runes as well. Marked in green here are the runes that one can find straight up, while the orange numbers represent runes that you have to cube in order to get on that difficulty level. For those of you who pay a massive amount of attention, you will see that in the Hell dataset one correction was made as now they are the equivalent of 
1.0 ist runes instead of the previously 1.1 ist runes. This was a minor error in the cubing calculations uh, I made in the last video. If we just consider what runes one can find straight up, a better visualized representation of the odds looks like this for normal, nightmare and hell difficulty. This lists the average number of runs needed to find any specific rune. The question mark on the ist rune stems from the fact that I didn't find any ist rune during my 300 hell runs, but in principle it is entirely possible to find one. Now let's do the same thing for the cubed up rune data, which extends the rune reach beyond what one can find from the counters directly. Let's have a closer look at these two distributions. There are probably a few among you who thought you could play it safe and hunt for runes only with the normal or nightmare counters and then cube things up. Anyway, I got really bad news for you. It is possible to get that juicy juicy pool rune in normal difficulty, but it will take you about 3 million runs to get there. An ort rune or even a fool rune is not that far fetched though. One quick mention about runtime is in order. Directly comparing these numbers can give a bit of a skewed perspective as the average time for a counters run differs between difficulty levels. The average run in hell difficulty took me about 2 minutes, while the average run on nightmare and normal difficulty only took me 45 seconds. This means you would be able to do approximately 2.5 times as many runs in Nightmare than you would do in Hell difficulty. And you now need to adjust these values for that fact accordingly, depending on how quick you are. This concludes our little analysis of the rune runs and in the third and final episode of this Countess Knowledge mini-series, I will give you a complete rundown of both rune word feasibility using the data acquired in these 900 runs, as well as explain the simple rules of map generation for the tower seller, which is important for quick counters runs in multiplayer mode and in single player speedrunning. Please share, like and subscribe and maybe check out my Diablo 2 stupid builds series for more Diablo 2 content. I hope you enjoyed and I see you guys next time.